Good morning, Congressman. Thanks for joining us on the show. My pleasure, David. So, this over this past week, we've had this terrible incident in Charlottesville. We have the president's reaction to it. Let me ask, ask you this. Here in Montana, we have the highest per capita number of hate groups in the entire country. As our congressman, how can you show leadership on this issue? Well, let me be very clear. When I, when I saw that car go into the crowd in Charlottesville, my, I mean, I, my own thoughts were, how could this happen in our country? Uh, white supremacy, neo-Nazism, racism, bigotry have, have no place in our society. It's, it's un-American. Uh, and we need to, we need to just, we just need to uh, uh, work to eliminate it. We saw some of it up in Whitefish with this anti-Semitic group that was there. Um, and it just, this is un-American. It is domestic terrorism. We should call it by name and work to eliminate it. What's, what, are, what are next steps? Were you disappointed in the president's response with the, um, the events? You know, we have a lot of drama coming out of the White House. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I personally wish he had been clearer to call out these groups by name, which he's now done. Um, uh, but it, it just white supremacy, neo-Nazism just has no place here. And I think we have to uh, condemn it wherever it occurs and uh, make, make sure that uh, uh, it doesn't happen in our communities. We all have to be on watch. So what are, what, what are the next steps here in Montana? What, I mean, what can we do moving yeah. forward as, I mean, uh, you know, I, I look to you as my congressman. What what should we do to to kind of stop this from happening here in our own communities? Well, uh, I think that one thing this event in Charlottesville has done has really increased awareness of the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and for my part, being the lone congressman for all of Montana, I'll continue to speak out against racism and bigotry wherever it occurs, in whatever form it occurs, because this is just not how we get things done. And the American Montanans expect more from us than this. Um, and uh, I think that's the, that's the right sort of leadership to show in a moment of this, is to just, I think about, you know, Heather Heyer, the, the young lady, 32 years old, who was killed in this thing. Um, I honestly thought when I saw this car go into the crowd that this was somehow in the Middle East someplace, but it happened right here in America. And I, it, just, it just breaks my heart. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we, need to, we need to call these things by name and work to eliminate them. Now, we've had a difficult fire season here in, in Montana, and I, I was looking at, of course, the amount of resources and money that have gone into fighting these fires. Global warming's happening. The earth's getting hotter. It's getting warmer. We're going to have longer fire seasons, bigger fires, more budgets. What's the fix here? How are we going to pay to deal with this compounding crisis? Well, there's a number of things we need to do. Mm -hmm. I, I've been on four of the fires so far. I was at the Zortman fire. I was up at the Lodgepole complex. I was at the Roundup fire, and I was at Lincoln. Uh, at that fire. And it was interesting, you know, that there we had actually tried to pursue forest management. And that's part of the solution. Uh, I think there's at least two things we need to do. One, uh, active forest management can reduce the impact from forest fires. At Lincoln, there had been an eight year process, including the Forest Service, the local community, uh, and all other interested parties, local property owners, to get a forest management project approved. It was then overturned by the local court because they said there wasn't an imminent danger of fire, and yet that was exactly the forest that was burning. We should have allowed that project to proceed. That's the first thing. The second thing is we've always treated these fires as if they're uh, occasional events, and the reality is we burn our forests every summer. Many of them reach uh, a stature where we need disaster funds. Rather than funding them out of base Forest Service dollars, we ought to look to do more uh, emergency appropriations. This is why I worked so hard to get that FEMA grant for the Lodgepole Forest Fire because initially it had been denied. But when I had the conversation with the FEMA director um, and, and made clear the significance of the devastation up in Garfield and Petroleum Counties, uh, I was very pleased we got that grant approved. Congressman Gianforte, thanks for joining us. He's been around the state. He's going to hit all 56 counties. Have fun. We'll see you next time when you come to Bozeman. Thank you very much. Take care. Yeah.